Murders, mysteries, unexplained stories, and our family's crazy opinions on them all. Join us now. The Family School of Thought is in session. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our next edition of the Family's School of Thought. How's everybody doing this week? Cold. Great. Cold? It's cold. It's cold today. It was a beautiful about, weekend. How about in Portland? Um, it's been 50 degrees. Actually, we had a 70. What is it? Sunday, we were at 70 degrees, and it was nice and warm and toasty. Um, but then it's kind of been 50 and on and off raining. Even today, it like has been, it, it's like literally black skies raining for five minutes. And then the next five minutes, it's bright, sunny, shiny. And so it's just been kind of a mix of that all day. Right. Mm. Sounds about the same weather we've had here in Michigan. We had some really nice, probably got up to about 80 on Saturday. 85. Sunday, Sunday was, oh, wow. warm, but it was cloudy and rainy kind of. But um, they got cold again last night, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to get down to 27 today. Ugh. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. 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 Okay. 20, nice on, maybe 29. Nice. Yeah, it was nice Saturday. I think we we opened all the windows and kept them open Saturday night. It was nice. Yeah, because it was only 60. It was 60 when you woke up on Sunday morning. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. We were outside all day Saturday, so that was nice. Yeah. Okay, let's get going. Jess, you got any interesting yes. facts? facts? I, have, I have a mental floss amazing fact. And I wanted to do this one because I think it's interesting. And Passover just ended this weekend on Sunday. So I, it was, I want to get it. You know, when we were recording this, Sunday was only a few days ago. So um, an Atlanta rabbi is the person to thank for getting kosher Coca-Cola um, put onto the shelves for Passover, during Passover. Um, in the 1930s, Rabbi Tobias Geffen, I, I think is how you pronounce his name, wrote the Coca-Cola company asking to review its top secret list of ingredients to see if they met kosher standards. And Coke agreed on the condition that he sweared the formula, formula to secrecy. So I didn't know that we're not Jewish. So I didn't know that there was actually a kosher Coca-Cola. during. No, Passover. I didn't know that. But I thought that was a pretty interesting fact. So, yeah. Never knew that. And me oh, yeah. and for me to give up Diet Coke during that. Remember, you did that one time for your um, yeah. Yeah. You gave up Diet Coke. That was not a pretty never, time. Never well, again. You know, well, Diet Coke is a whole nother story because they've got things that make you addicted to it mm. it's not healthy for you it's, <laughs> it's, it's so bad Cheers. Um, it's diet on the clean that, doesn't mean it's good <laughs> and diet coke um, is probably one of the worst pops sodas on the market yeah i mean yeah um i mean like you said we're not jewish so i'm not really like familiar with the like kosher terms mm -hmm. but what's in coke that's not kosher is my question I don't know, and I don't know if I really want to know. I know. <laughs> as I far know, as like, I know. You don't want to know what is in the sausage, right? Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> well, that's the thing is that as far as I know, kosher has to deal with, like, living human beings. Like, they, like yeah. things aren't kosher if they're not, like, raised. If it's not, an, yeah, right. Like, right. healthy. Why? Like, it's right. like pigs aren't kosher because they're, like, they they live in dirt. They're and dirty. They, yeah. Dirty. Yeah. So what is not kosher? I don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to know. Yeah. So don't even ask. Yeah. Yeah. I want to continue to drink it. Yeah, I'm yeah, getting more don't. confused the more we talk about it. But um, so <laughs> I guess what my question was: Are you saying they have a certain Coke that is labeled kosher? Coke? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah, they, so they probably and they only. It. You, oh, and maybe because we don't live in like a Jewish community area, yeah. kind of thing, but mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm assuming you know just the same as Lent, people start serving fish sandwiches or doing fish dinners during Lent for you know the Christian observance. Mm -hmm. This is kind right. of the same thing. It's a short period during Passover that they do kosher Coke or they put it on the market. But I thought it was pretty interesting that 
you know, Coca. Of course, this was back in the '30s, but I thought it was interesting that Coca-Cola, this huge company, was willing to allow this rabbi to see their their secret ingredient right. and and be able Especially to confirm that. Yeah. So, although you know, nowadays that you know, baby, back in the '30s, this rabbi could have said, "Yeah, I saw it," and people are like, "Okay, sure." It's, it's, purely, it's, okay. it's yeah. kosher now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is cocaine kosher? <laughs> I don't know. You know, we could go into a whole, that's a whole nother podcast. Of, you know, cocaine what is? Bro- you do know what the sign language, the, the what the sign is in sign language for Coca-Cola, right? No. Nope. Isn't it just Coke? It's just, it's shooting up, like shooting up. Yeah, it's like, see my arm. Coca-Cola. <laughs> It was originally made with cocaine. Made with cocaine. cocaine. Yeah. Right, it's yeah. called cocaine. It was also a, you, that's probably- it was also a medicine when it right. first came right. out. It was a right. cure all medicine. Right. right. For entertainment yeah, so- purposes only. It, just, <laughs> it, yeah. it does cure. <laughs> okay. All right. Not like not yes. like burners, okay? We're Michigan burners. people, burners, cures, everything. It is cures right. everything. <laughs> I just have to put that there. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. How about a good song for us this week? All right. Well, I wanted to stick with songs we like. Um, and uh, I know you're going to know this one. Hey, Jude, oh, yeah. don't make yeah, it no, bad. <laughs> Take a sad song, a song and make it better. Well, it's already going to be sad. I love the song, and I bet you I can tell you anything you're about to say about it. And I, I can tell you, you more. I, <laughs> I have a tidbit. I have a tidbit about the Beatles. I can well, tell obviously, this is one of their probably biggest songs, I'd think. Um, and it's actually written about John Lennon's son, Julian mm-hmm. Lennon. Right. Um, and so what makes it, unfortunately, very creepy is that it was written after uh, John left uh, Julian's mother for Yoko Ono. Um, and he was having a really hard time with it. And so Paul McCartney wrote this song as basically like a, you know, trying to get his spirits back up and trying to make him feel better. Um, and of course, now we know uh, with time that Julian has come forward and said that John was very abusive to himself and his mother. Um, so it makes the song even worse because, you know, it's, you know, the Beatles and it's John Lennon and it's, you want to believe the best because they were, you know, the Beatles. But more and more as time goes on, we're learning that John Lennon was kind of a really, really shitty person. Oh, <laughs> so it makes wow. like all these. That's it makes. All... <laughs> Listen, I, you, you know, know the John more I, the has more. Been one of my idols, my whole life. Well, you should really look into him because he's not a good person to idolize. Well, he was a great humanitarian. That's for sure. I know his Let's personal see. life got a little. I've heard it was it was muddled. It was definitely muddled. Of how he treated his ex-wife, yes. but he was—he definitely was a great humanitarian. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I have <laughs> I have a tidbit to add. Are you done, Cassie? Oh yeah. No, okay. I have a tidbit to add. I want to know if you guys know this. So, did you know Owasso, Michigan? was home to the American Record Pressing Company. Um, and they would, you know, they would put out millions of vinyls and 45s and all that. And they were one of the uh, um, companies that first did the American um, pressing of the vinyls for the records for the Beatles when in the, in America, in the United States. And because they didn't, no, they only heard the the word beetle. They didn't know that it was spelled B E A T, and so they really? put in the animal beetle on the al- albums. <laughs> so the the first record sold in like in the United States, or, like, or at least in Michigan. I don't know. This is you know like, but I know some of these facts. But they spelled beetles wrong on the album because they I, wonder, I, bet, I bet if anybody had those records they would be worth the, the i'm sure they were but, but where was the um, building in Owasso? on king street i really? bet you on yeah. king street 
I bet yeah, you doesn't. So is that um, record that, store? Where the hospital by, was? I mean, where would that um, place be? It says so. Oh, I'm like in the Mitchells says, by Mitchells. Um, one one eight one zero West King Street. So, uh, oh, it's where the animal feed feed place is. That new that new building now, or it's not a new building, but where they the um they have that big new structure next to the railroad track. That's amazing. <laughs> I did not know that. And I yeah, didn't know that, that either because King. I thought. I mean, I was thinking King Street on the other side, but yeah. Yeah, but, so, so it's, it's right by the Shiawassee River. Uh, no, not not quite, but it's like, like over right by the where, hospital. Uh, well, yeah, kind of, but it's like by Cleveland, Cleveland Avenue. So, um, well, I guess I was thinking, or, or you know where Oliver, the Oliver Woods Assistant Living is? Yes, it's that building right behind that assisted living complex. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's very that's interesting. Fascinating. Interesting fact. Did yes. you also, I could give some facts about Owasso because did you know that Owasso was the first producer of Louisville Slugger Bats too? Oh, no, I didn't. And then the company moved to Louisville and that's where they became big. So they were Owasso I'm, Sluggers. I'm full of facts about Owasso. <laughs> were they called Louisville Sluggers then? <laughs> no, they were not. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. Going back to the, the, the record, I is that old like what is it called like jelly bean record store still open by mcdonald's oh yeah that is yes. yeah that so is i bet you you open. could go because that's a buy sell and I'm sure. yeah, yeah you could probably yeah, find one yeah. of these records i'm sure you could that's well, I mean, even the even downtown there's that old record album place where you can buy old record albums like right on the corner of Washington. That's what we're talking about. That oh no, that's not. No, you're talking about the place. flea market place down by the one that has the unicorn in the window. Is that what you're talking about? Downtown. I'm talking about. It's called like jelly beans yeah, or no, something. It's no, literally I'm right by. You go by old eight yeah. tracks or games. Yeah, yeah jelly beans. It's over by. Stuff. It's over by Meyer, like across the street mm -hmm. from Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. But th yeah. there's that record store right downtown on the corner, by Radio Shack. Mm -hmm. It's right on the corner. And they sell old albums. It's always been there. I don't know what you're even talking about. I'm going to go by and take a picture of it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to. Yeah, you're going to have to. Because, um, yeah, that is that is interesting. But I'm sure that there's, you know, like the city of Owasso probably has something in their archives or in their collections oh, and stuff. Yeah. Because well, so, I city. do know that they have, they do have like the original bats, but they also have the wrought iron furniture that right. is, sold worldwide you know yes. and that's that started in in Owasso too well and that's still so, there what are well, the still they there? don't they don't produce them really yeah but, um, right. Owasso also has a really dark side of the history too yeah but we'll, yeah. we'll this, that's you know we'll get maybe to, for another we episode we do another episode <laughs> on Owasso stuff because yeah you're right By itself. we have a presidential candidate that was from here too so dewey oh oh dewey dewey yeah his house is all marked off and everything and there are well there used to be at least newspapers from when he won the election but i said you know like they would that's the whole truman and dewey do you guys not remember this in history well maybe not remember it but with history you know it was said that dewey was going to win the election and yeah. Truman, yes. and so they printed all the papers with Dewey wins or you know whatever, and Truman actually won the election. Uh, yeah, I remember that. So, so the yeah. paper you used to work for screwed that up and put the wrong. I, well, that was a worldwide, or maybe you know, United countrywide, but uh, nationwide. But yeah. Okay. So okay, enough. All right, with, wow. yeah, we we can get into another episode. <laughs> whole other episode. Hold on. <laughs> Now we could do right. this instead of mine. Well, I love Hey Jude. Um, no, it's your John turn. Lennon. I love John Lennon. Yeah. And Cynthia. I used to love John Lennon. I don't know <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to fill me in, Jack Cass. Remember when we went to a Yoko Just Google it. exhibit in New York? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've never been to New York as a family. Why would I? Oh, no, your mother now. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. We went to a yeah. Local art exhibit in New York, and it had like um, a live, what do you call that? When it was a live person, that was the art. 
exhibit. It was a person on a ladder or something. I can't remember. Like living art? Yeah, it was like living art. It was a guy on a ladder. The art's alive? Do. Okay, <laughs> let's get out with the show. Science <laughs> alive? This is going to be a long show, I can tell. This is going to be, let's get on to our actual topic. Okay, I believe D, it's your turn. You're yes, it is. Um, I'm hoping that I'm going to do a good job on this, but oh, yeah. I'm doing mine on the Herman Webster Mud Mudgit. Um, he was born in um, 1861 to a wealthy family, well known as the one of the first serial killers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, AKA. So let's start this off with AKA yeah, with he, Herman Webster Mudgett, but most people know him as, as H.H. Holmes. Holmes. Because when he started uh, when he moved to Chicago, he changed this his This is a good name. one, Mom. He changed his name to H, Dr. H.H. H. Holmes. And that happened in um, 1886 um, when he moved to Chicago. But he was born to a wealthy family in 1881 in Gilmanton, New Hampshire. Um, he began as a swindler and a confident trickster who was widely considered to, uh, considered to be the country's first serial killer. Um, killed and did surgery on animals when he was um, just a young child and um, was thought and suggested that he had killed a school classmate when he was just young. Um, wow. He also attended the University of Michigan. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, of course it's pretty, pretty, pretty scary. <laughs> and the um, medical school, though the medical school. Yes, yes. And so he got his degree and became a doctor. And then he moved to Chicago in 1886. Um, and became, um, got his job as a pharmacist under the name of H.H. H. Holmes, Dr. H.H. H. Holmes. And then soon after that, he began killing people in order to steal their properties. Mm -hmm. And um, he later, you know, they got him on fraudulent things. He built a house, was, and um, he got... He, he got convicted and arrested for insurance fraud, and that happened back before the before he built the hotel. And in that was in 1893. He was allegedly seduced and murdered women, and was arrested on insurance fraud. But um, he built his house in Chicago, and it was known as the Murder ca Castle. And it was equipped with secret passengers, trap doors, soundproof room doors that could be locked from the outside. Then he had gas chambers, jets to asphyxiate his victims and a clean, a kiln to cremate the bodies. Wow. So, so he, he was a smart killer. Yes, he yeah, was. He had it all. It was, it was, it was, I mean, how he got away with all this, I just don't understand. And the sad thing is, in the end, he was only convicted of one murder. Mm -hmm. One murder. And they yeah. they um, um, executed him on May 7th of um, 1896 at age 34 and nine days before his 35th birthday. How many people did he... Do they suspect well, it? he allegedly confessed to 27 murders, but in all of the, you know, in all of this, he, the investigation, well, no, in, in all of this, he worked at a pharmacist and, or he concocted, uh, with this insurance fraud, he concocted a scheme with an associate, and his name was Ben Pitzler, Pitzel, Pitzel, mm -hmm. and um, by faking his death, collected ten thousand dollars, and then him and his Ben Pitzler um, went from um, to 
traveled to Colorado, Missouri, New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Tex and Texas, committing other acts of fraud. They were con men, yeah. Yes, they were con right. men. Yeah. And then um, he uh, was married to four different women. He had four different wives. He had one child, and her name was Lucy Theodore Theodate. Theodore Theodate? I think I'm pronouncing that. It's T-H-E-O-D-A-T-E. Holmes. Mm -hmm. Theodore Theodate. Theodate. And um, she grew up and became a school teacher. But why he was married to Clara, he um, also married, he met and married um, Mirtha Bil Bilknet. And that's when he had his daughter. He was supposedly um, filed a divorce with Clara. And um, said that she, you know, committed adultery and stuff like that. But it re really was him who committed the adultery. But um, then um, he ended up, why he was still married to Clara, and, because... It never went through uh, the divorce through. He filed for divorce. Then it was dropped. She moved back to um, Massachusetts and um, she uh, they never were ended up being divorced. So then he mar was married to Mirtha and then he um, met Georgina Yoke and married her, too. And then there was another one, but I forgot to write it down. Um, and then uh, as he was doing all of this traveling, he convinced Ben Pitzler, he killed him. And then he was believed to have killed three of his children. The youngest and the oldest stayed with um, uh, Pitzler's wife, Pitzler's wife. And then he ended up killing, he confessed to killing the other three by asphyxiating them. So I'm sure that he took them back to the hotel and and um, yeah. put the gas chamber, chamber on them. But um, he had three mistresses. Um, then he uh, gave various contradictory accounts throughout his life, initially, initially claiming innocence and later saying he was possessed by Satan. Um, but with this hotel, he built the murder castle um, in to uh, during the world or world fair, and he would lure the tourists and visitors in to his castle. And he has he had apartments and um, was known to or said to have killed quite a few of his victims. Does anybody else know anything? So well, he yes. had a hotel in Chicago during the, the World's World Fair. Fair. Yes. And he would lure the tourists in there into his hotel and kill them there. Right. The and then, yeah. Yes. And in 1839, the hotel was um, uh, arson, an arsonist um, burn it down. It was burned down. And yeah. then it was rebuilt and used as a post office later. Oh. Yeah. But it had. So it's. it's it yeah. had tunnels and everything underground, and he could go from place to place. So he it built was, the hotel, or did yeah. he buy the hotel? No, I he built he, it. He built this. And oh, he I was bought thinking property. he bought like. Yeah, I was thinking he bought like sections of it, but then built on or like did add on. But it would the all the. It like it was like a block long, right? Yeah, he said and, that. And, I mean, he built it. Um, it was like a huge thing, and then it was all the, the it was connected like each floor, each, like from wall to wall was all connected, so you could get from one side of the building all the way to the other, through tunnels underneath or through mm -hmm. like secret passageways and stuff. Right. And right. The, the World Fair in 1893 had a huge crowd because that was when they were introducing the Ferris wheel. That was the new. Thing, which was supposed to be a competition against the Eiffel Tower. 
Uh, because yes. the Eiffel Tower was built at the previous World Fair. Oh, wow. And then um, Holmes claimed to have had met her, uh, that an actress named Minnie Williams, do you, who moved to Chicago. I don't know anything about that. I don't remember. Yeah. I, I read um, the book, Devil in the White City, which is oh, where yeah. I got a lot of my information. It's a, a like half is about the Chicago World Fair and then half is about how how H.H. H. Holmes was able to get away with a lot of this because there were so many people coming into Chicago from all over the world to be part of this World Fair and back in late 1800s they didn't have telephones or anything so they couldn't communicate with family so nobody knew that anybody was missing mm -hmm. um, for uh, until it was way too late and or they just thought, oh, they died at the fair, or they, you know, and there was issues because it was right on Lake, the fair was right on Lake Michigan, and I, I might be mistaken, but I feel like it was where the Navy Pier is now. Oh, I might probably. be where like the where the Ferris wheel was and Ferris stuff, wheel, yeah, because they have a Ferris wheel there. I'm it's not the original one, I'm assuming, but um, I'd hope but not. I We've think been there. if I remember. <laughs> If I'm remembering correctly, that's where like the World Fair kind of took place. I don't know where it where that is compared to where his little castle was, but um, yeah, it's like people. So it was right on Lake Michigan. So pe they were thinking, oh, people may have fallen in the lake and drowned, or you know, they just got lost, or you know, there and there were a lot of deaths due to illnesses and you know everything like or natural causes at the fair, anyways. So they just kind of mm -hmm. ever family just chalked it up to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it probably took them a while to put it all together. Right. Right. One, I, I think too, I don't know. Let me look up the world fair. Cause um, I'm uh, with the world fair. I'm assuming that they had started planning this years in advance. Um, especially like back then. Right. Um, let's see. I don't know. The book, The Devil in the White City, really got into like the Chicago Fair. And a lot of it was like, if you're into like architecture and all that kind of stuff, you'll love that section. But to me, it was a little hard to get through, through that, that part of parts of the book. But um, was, like, I don't really care about how white a structure is. It's, uh, you know, where, but. Uh, where was this structure at? Um, what? He, she the thinks World it's Fair? by like the Navy Pier. Okay. I think that's where like the World Fair was. That's what I was. You know that like too. long pier. Right. right. Yeah. Um, when she started the story, I was expecting it to be in one of the hotels that we have stayed in. Um, I don't think it's again. I hope not. No, it's not. Yeah. It's not there anymore. It's considered well, it the, post burned down. the post office. The post office. Okay. Yeah. So wherever the big huge post office is, that's where the hotel was. Which I can't picture that where it's at. And I'm wondering, so I don't know, and maybe these buildings aren't there anymore, but okay, so on this Wikipedia page, it says there were prominent prominent architects designed 14 great buildings as part of the World Fair. And that's where, like, the book, they went into great detail on the building of those buildings and stuff. So right. um, the exposition, exposition covered 690 acres. Um See, I'm not seeing that. Featuring, the, well, this is just about the World Fair. Oh. Yeah. And there were, there were 27 million, 27 million, 300,000 people that attended that World Fair, that they took record of, at least. Wow. Oh, right. So that's right. how many people, that, I mean, millions. Well, I mean, problems. this is a World Fair, Dad. Like, this is people coming from not just yeah, Asia, know. the United it's States. Been, this is, I've yeah. been to a couple of them. But, oh, um, okay. So we were never to the one in. We were only to the one in Tennessee. Never to the yeah, one. Yeah. So, Chicago. so okay. the World Fair, the venues that it was in, forty-six countries participated in the World Fair, um, but it was in Jackson Park, and Midway. I don't even know how to pronounce that word. Midway Planets. Planets. Um, it's on the south side of Chicago. It's a public park on the south side of Chicago. Um, but Jackson Park. Well, it's, it says that the, um, a, the I was just gonna was, say, was to the left of the Inglewood Post Office. So I don't know where the Inglewood okay. Post Office is. Well, I can. So 
I it is not on the Navy Pier <laughs> because it's down at the south side of Chicago. Right. The, the Museum of Science and Industry is one of that building is one of the buildings that was oh. built during the World Fair. Yeah, oh, so. yeah, we went to the Science yeah. Museum. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's where that. So it was down. But it's in on that. Inglewood, uh, down by the Inglewood, and it says um, the castle was left to right top to bottom scenes found. Well, that no, that's the trap door. Um, it it doesn't say where exactly. Let's see if I can. So it was in the south people. side of Chicago. So it was in the meanest part of town. It says it says is there a man called Leroy Brown there. Houghton's <laughs> Drugstore at the northwest corner of South Wallace Avenue and West Sixty Third Street in Inglewood. So I don't know yeah. exactly where. At that's at, but you know, I mean, it's down. I think it's down in the downtown part where most people don't go. Well, it's on the south side, so Which that's a bad, way off of yeah, today. Yeah. It's a bad part today oh. and today. Yeah, today it, yes, it's, it's very, it's very, a, very about, you don't go. This no. fair would it have lasted like three months or was it for a week? I, How long would it have lasted? I think the fair lasted. I don't know if it's bad, but it I'm last pretty sure it lasted. It um. <laughs> It so it Two opened weeks. on May, no May first of eighteen ninety three, and it closed on October thirtieth. Okay, so eighteen ninety three. I said eighteen eighty three. I'm sorry, eighteen May first, eighteen ninety three to October thirtieth, eighteen ninety three. So right. about six months. Okay, but he was subjected to fifty lawsuits. So you know, in the Chicago alone, that's not including yeah. in all of the states that he went into. So, and we really don't know how many murders he really did convict because he had staged so many too that, and some of them were ended up being alive. Mm, right. Mm. But that's what I think he could be considered probably America's first serial killer, but probably like the first well known con artist too. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So. And they say that just in like one of the articles, it said that um, just because you kill a bunch of people, it doesn't mean you're a sol serial killer because you know, we really don't know how many people he did kill because he when he went to court, when he went to when they convicted him, he was only convicted of one murder. So right. Right. he that is a serial right. killer. Right. So I just don't understand why he was convicted. I think. Because that's they the only, only one that evidence. they could prove. Right. right. The they couldn't one that they prove, could prove. But he, but yeah. he had admitted to killing. But right. because thought that he, he had a kill. He killed, uh, yeah. He it's thought he, that he killed more than 200. What? Yeah. yeah. I didn't see that in 200. Okay. Well, again, it goes, I think it's because it happened during the World Fair. They're not able to prove if these missing right. people were oh. killed by him. And because he burned people, he. You know, yeah, he right. would burn their bodies and he, you know, like, so there's no evidence. There was trace. There's, yeah. There was there no, no there was no remains right. left. Yeah. So these people, a lot of them, of those like 200 or over 200, they were missing people from the fair. And that's where like, they don't know if they fell into Lake Michigan and drowned or if, you know, you know, what if they decided to, you know, because back then too, it was easy to like, hey, I don't want to be this person anymore. I'm going to move to a different state. I'm going to go to this World Fair, get lost, and then move on and change my name and become Joanne Susan. I don't know. You know, you know it's like you could just easily go on and say, I, I'm right. changing my name. And nobody, there's no record of you before. So. Yeah. It, it, it was crazy. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. It just says one victim confirmed and nine total suspected by him. And the span of crime went from 1891 to 1894. Are you Which sure is, this is and the date he was American apprehended. Horror story. What? Are you sure this is, is not it, an episode of American Horror Story? No, it was no, based on. The date he was apprehended was um, November the 17th of 1894. Was Lady well, I mean, Saga involved in this? Huh? <laughs> no. But um, 
his other his other wife or spouse was Minnie Williams, which he had convinced that was the actor. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he killed right. her, you know. Well, he was, yeah, well, he is a con artist, but a little bit of like a narcissist. But people were charmed by him, which right. I think is the, the similar case with every serial killer. Yeah. They know how to charm people. Or with him, with his, his castle, the, people needed somewhere to stay. And he had a, he was running a hotel or, you know, apartments kind of thing. And so people were like, yeah, let's go live here for the, our time in Chicago. And then he'd sneak into their bedrooms and kill them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And put them down a laundry chute. Wow. I just thought of this. Do you guys watch terror. how? Yeah, in House of Terror. Yeah, but do you, yeah. have you guys ever watched How I Met Your Mother? It reminds yes. me of the episode, the episode where Barney was describing how, like, he does. You know, he is a um, he likes he's a playboy and likes to hook up with random women, but he doesn't want to deal with them after the fact. So he changes his bed into like a chute, so that when he's done, he just pushes a button and then his bed like. Inclined and they go up. down a shoe out to like the alley out in the front. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's Not basically much. what this is. I don't know. Um, I guess it's more of a darker or like tone than how Todd. I met you. Think about yes, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that like a lot of like younger generations are buying houses and then basically demolishing these like how like houses or like um putting up structures. And they, like, have to, like, get into these, like, old-fashioned houses, like, their walls and, like, their structures. Right. They're, right. they're finding that um, a lot of these old houses had, like, shoots for, like, razors or, like, certain yeah. things. Yeah. Um, and they're finding a lot of, like, people would just put, like, teeth, like, that fell out in these walls. So, like, oh. uh, like people are, like, demolish not demolishing, I shouldn't say that, but, like... Renovating, renovating their homes yeah and yeah. like knocking down Amazing. walls and all these like teeth and razors yeah. Yeah. fall yeah. out of the walls well you know so they used kind to of... make medicine cabinets that's yeah that's what i'm talking about yeah, yeah that's what i'm they talking about razors in there. Yeah. Yeah. little like yeah, well that's the thing is like people yeah. were like putting these razors there but it's not like it was going anywhere it was literally just falling <laughs> into right. the wall right, right. That's what, like... <laughs> yeah it wasn't yeah, like going to the trash or anything like that right well i think if somebody was ever to renovate our home they're going to find lots of stuff in the walls that yes, we purposely because... put in there yeah oh. don't, don't you remember that hole in the kitchen Cass? <laughs> no, no Cass Cass was not we... there. <laughs> but we told you about it i don't there. remember yeah. anything being put in there the walls a, there was a big square where they kept the phone in the kitchen between the kitchen Opening. and the living room and we um, plastered it all back up or put drywall and Jesse and, and Jordan put stuff in there. Which is probably mm. like a Ninja Turtle and a Barbie. I don't remember. Anytime what I put we've in done there. any kind of renovations, I've always yeah. put something. Hey, we, it's going to be a big, huge time capsule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. We've done the, the same Robinson. thing as, as we've done renovations too. But a lot of ours, too, is um, we had a roll of Justin Bieber duct tape. So whenever we did <laughs> renovations, we just fucking duct tape. <laughs> why would you have so, this? Because why would we have – somebody gave it to us. I think Matt, one of Matt's brothers gave it to us as a like a Christmas gift. Like I a, think it was a gag show. gift when, and during right, Christmas. Right, yeah. Christmas. Well, and we really and we're like, what are we going to do with this? <laughs> Justin Bieber duct tape. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. So wow. it's behind like our microwave. So when somebody goes to replace the microwave, yeah, it'll be <laughs> there. It's behind our, our vanity in our bathroom. We really should like it should you should the more you renovate, like make little like a treasure map, like put little <laughs> secret messages behind walls. But then like the the treasures the duct tape, like, right, like right, right. you get to the treasure and it says duct right. <laughs> Yeah. That would be kind of cool. I, I I have seen it. Um, it was a long time ago, but I saw a TikTok, um, like series. I guess you could call it, where the these people, their grandfather passed away, and they found 
and this is like who knows if it's true or not but they found a treasure map type of thing and it was a lot of hidden uh like capsules or hidden doors in the house and they went on this like treasure map it was you know like fine you know it's like a bunch of riddles i think it would be really cool too i'm getting some good ideas here we're gonna yeah i know that sounds amazing um i always wanted a house with like you know a secret room or yeah Yeah, me too i always thought that'd be really cool well i always thought it would be really cool to have like an old house but it's it's so much work but you know Again, back to, you know, Owasso does the Parade of Homes every year, or they did before the pandemic, at least. But they would show a lot of the older houses, and they did. They had hidden compartments in some of them where, like, I'm assuming more for, like, back in the the Depression era era, or the Depression time where they had built-in cabinets, but there was, like, a hidden safe underneath the built-in cabinets that you had to, like, pull out the drawers to be able to know that it was there. Right. Or, you know, that kind of stuff, which I think is interesting and really cool. But older houses are just so much work that, yeah. Well, and a lot of the... one time, Owasso had wealthy people that lived there. So right. they, they right. don't be people that have that kind of stuff. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, like, a lot of older houses, like, secret secret passageways was basically just the help passageways because yes. they weren't exactly. supposed to be seen yes. by yes. guests and now that i was yeah, there are a lot of houses in owasso that have a back stairway or a narrow mm-hmm. stairway with like a little small tiny bedroom so that your help would have the help. the front door yeah. right. or be right. seen by your guests <laughs> yeah. yes right which which goes back to the history of owasso that we could yes <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Yeah, that's just, uh, we, a well, lot of those are another topic. Railroad, a lot of houses had secret rooms yeah. for that. Yeah, too. which that is, I mean, Michigan was a huge factor in that too, right. especially to the Detroit area. Right. They were getting out of um, Michigan through, or yeah, getting out of the country through Michigan to Canada. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But um, it, it, was a, it was a crazy, uh, you know, and the sad thing is, is, he started at such a young age, and we've already discussed. Yeah. Well, he's only thirty-four when he died. Right, so right. But I very mean, young. When he was in elementary, he was considered um, very, very in- a very intelligent child. Yeah, and right. um, you know, like most serial killers, their IQ is very high, and he graduated from University of Michigan. Yeah, and I feel like we should start investigating the University of Michigan. I have two <laughs> friends who graduated from there, so maybe we should ask them some questions about what the classes are like. Right, right. Both well, in medical fields, so. There's a serial killer, very famous, who was killing students from there, female women. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. There's lots of people. I mean, they're just. But when they kill their aunt, when they're. They're young and they kill animals like that. That's usually that's usually that's, a good. Sign. That's a sign. Yeah. Yes, yes. And and he was doing that. And then um, when he did kill his victims, it was also you know for per, you know purposes entertainment purposes only entertainment purposes only. Um, it, it was said that he would sell their corpse to medical schools. Oh, right. Oh, that okay. actually oh. happens a lot. That happens yeah. a lot, actually. You, know, you don't know what he really did with all, you know, like you said, all these people from, um, if, if you, now you could probably do DNA, but when they, when he killed all these people, we probably would find out if we have their yeah. DNA, but all well, those corpses were sold to different universities all around the world. And that's what, and that's what, I, I, that, now that you say that, I think that was, that's part of the book though, too. I think that's what he he was like killing people and when he was touring the United States, that's what he yes. was doing. He was selling the bones of the people that he killed. Right. But he was right. he was a con man too that um that he would get close to like elderly people and then, he would, and, then written, he would... and he'd get written into their wills and then he'd collect all their money or all their possessions or would steal it from them because they had like dementia or whatever. Right. And um, he was their yeah. beneficiary. He made them yeah. all sign up right. and all of his employees that worked for him 
in his storefronts and his pharmacies, yeah. he would make them his him to be their beneficiary. Right. So, right. you know, he's yeah. just, he was just, he was a very smart, intelligent person, and he yeah. a, a good con. He was, you know, right. most people most people are good con. They know I wonder do. if because he is America's first serial killer, or mo- first, you know, well, obviously uh, documented. No. Yeah, yeah, documented serial killer. If other serial killers didn't um, use him as inspiration, because you know, there's so many things that, like, even like with the like, obviously, like the traps and the like mm-hmm. man, or the the hotel with like trap doors. Obviously, the toy right. box killer is known for like having trap doors, and right. like his victims are not known because he literally would take them from situations where people wouldn't look for them. And then, then like the selling of the, like the skeletons to medical colleges. I've no, I know there's a couple, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but I know I've heard stories of other serial killers doing such things. Well, uh, that's what I'm saying. So people. they've got to have like, or even like, even like getting old people to like getting into old people's wills. There's so many yeah. con artists who do that now. So I wonder if people take inspiration from H.H. H. Holmes. Right. Yeah. I, I, well, I really creepy. think that there's so many people that yeah. are, are you know, because we have such good social media now that you can get into anything. And I think they're all copycatters, you know. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. So this is so, so I wanted because there's theories that H.H. H. Holmes was actually not the person that was killed for these crimes or prosecuted or it, but he actually ended up escaping Mm -hmm. and changing his name and moving on. So there are theories that he actually was not executed. Um, And so I was reading, but you don't really know that for a fact because it's not, no, no. but he, yeah. So he asked for his coffin to be contained in cement and buried 10 feet deep. Because he was concerned about grave robbers that would steal his body and use it for dissection. So mm-hmm. that's what he wanted to do. Um, but his neck, when they were, he was hanged and his neck never broke. So instead they strangled him to death slowly. Um, they pronounced him dead for 20 minutes after, or 20 minutes after they strangled him. And, um, but so then, yeah, so there's, Theories that he faked his own death, that he really wasn't dead during the strangulation. And he and could then, have because he was such a yeah. good I mean and yeah, he could have taken he could have taken medicine because even back then you could take medicine to um right, right. make Slow you look your heart dead. Yeah, right. make you look dead, but you really weren't dead. Yeah. And then, look at Romeo and Juliet. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, you know. But this was Romeo and Juliet was way back. After that, they were fictional. Characters. They were fictional, written before <laughs> well, I him. Know, but I mean, people. <laughs> yes, the story, yes. the storyline is on the same basis. You know, I'm, right. I, I guess I'm not. I'm not. But in so in 2017, admit, admit the allegations that he, in in fact, escaped his execution. His body was exhumed for testing, um, and this was led by a Janet. Mon- Monge of University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. Due to his coffin being contained in cement, his body was found not to have decomposed normally. His clothes were almost almost perfectly preserved, and his mustache was found to be intact. <laughs> so maybe his mustache was fake. <laughs> oh, that's so gross. And then the well, the body it can was- happen. The body was positively identified by his teeth as being um, H.H. Holmes. Mm. And then he was reburied. Okay. So in t- up till 2017, there were theories. There were theories. That, yeah. So, but also, if he's a con artist, what is, how do you know that he didn't pull out all of his teeth and, uh, you know, put in those well, wooden don't, dentures? <laughs> don't you think that the state was okay with his request to be painted to buried in all that cement like wouldn't they just go like you're a murderer you. We're paying you. We well, don't care what you think well, I don't know look I at, think this was look at death row this, last meals like right, should we really right. give murderers right. steak dinners and well okay but that's uh, a meal it's not like how we're going to 
preserve your body. Yeah, but that's tax well, but if, your if dollars he, if that was going his, into. If, if that was his death wish and if that's what was in his benefit, uh, I mean, in his well, um, well. will, that that's how he was to be buried. You got to, you, you know, gotta, the oh, cemetery, the cemetery is going to do it. Well, the cemetery is going to do it. Well, you, you're supposed to, but fam with family and unless somebody. So how think about this as your family. I'm this is all again from Wikipedia, so who knows what is true or what is not, but I'm I'm sure it's some factual. But in 2017, I guess maybe that he was dug out his um re remains were dug up because of this, but there was a documentary or a docu-series that was done on the History Channel called American Ripper, in which <laughs> His his great great grandson Jeff Mudgett, along with a former CIA analyst Armelius Fox, investigated clues to prove that Holmes was also the infamous London serial killer Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper, oh, wow. yes, yes, and that was in yeah. that was in my paperwork too. Yes, yeah. So yeah, so he could have been Jack the Ripper as well, but I don't know. I, it doesn't say if that was proven or denied. And he um, could have been right. a different name in a different state because right. in yeah. Chicago, he was right. known as Dr. H.H. H. Holmes. But he, like I said, he went to, um, he was yeah. a con artist and he went to Pennsylvania, Texas. Um, oh, yeah. Missouri, Colorado, yeah. New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and Texas. So think of all of those different states. He had to have gone by a different name. Right. And, yeah. and in Pennsylvania, he might have went as Jack the Ripper. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a, yeah. So, and the, I got a lot of, like I said, I got a lot of my information from the book. The, it's the full title is "The Devil in the White City: Murder, Magic, and Madness at the Fair That Changed America." Uh, it's by Eric Lar 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 And do you have the paper? Eric do you have the paperback, Lars or is it, do you have it on? I have a no. I have a paperback. Yeah, you'll have to I, read it so I can I, read it. It's in storage somewhere, I think. Um, so, but it's, it's just a. Find you on that bookshelf? Yeah, let me reach back and get it. Yeah, write it down so I can see if I can get that book. Um, yeah, because I, yeah, I know I, I didn't see it in a I mean, paperback. It is an actual paperback. So I'm like, oh, this will be, let's just see if I like it or not. And I've heard so many rumors that, that this was supposed to this book was supposed to be turned into a movie yeah. um and johnny I'm Depp was supposed to listen. play h.h H. holmes but i don't that like i've never really saw anything more than that so he's a lot yeah. busy right now yeah. yeah this was well this was years ago too so this was you know the book was published in 2003 so this was you know a few years ago before he was busy so but, what was the name I of know, it the devil the in devil the in the white city she said it about 10 times i know it yeah. there's a bunch of books though too so there's um i'm trying to think there's a comprehensive biography from 2017 that is h.h H. holmes the true story of the white city devil i've never this you know the devil in the white city is like the first time that i ever heard chicago being called the white city is that something you guys know it as? I've always known as it as the Windy City. The Windy City. Yeah. 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 It's always been Windy City. So yeah. I don't know why they're doing Well, okay. So I it. don't know. And maybe they're doing it because of the World Fair. Like the one. So the, the building that is the um, Science and Industry Museum, that, that it has like a dome on the top of it. And I think that's where like the architecture got really detailed. And I think that's, you know. It was painted white or it gleamed in the sunshine. I did what, not why focus do, to. Why, why did they call it the White City? What, what I don't does that know. come from? I, that, I just thought it was from the book, you know, but it, there's a couple books that call it the White City. Hmm. Well, Let's see. I'm looking at an article right now from, it came out in January of 2022 that says they are going to do a Hulu drama series um, with Keanu Reeves. Uh, that's titled oh. "The Devil in the White City," um, with oh, so Martin Scorsese one, yeah. and Leonardo DiCaprio. So, it oh could no, be no, no, yeah. So it wasn't Johnny Depp; it was Leonardo DiCaprio. There you go. 
That's what it was. Yeah. So I I got those two mixed up. <laughs> What's eating Gilbert great? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was. Oh, <laughs> I'm so delayed on the reaction. <laughs> <laughs> um there was also i can't find it that i was looking for because i know like a couple years back there was i can't remember the name of it but there was a tv show that wasn't like about hh holmes it was like about hh holmes and another character like time traveling i can't even remember what it was but i know it had hh holmes in it because it was like the, whoever the main character was was like chasing after H.H. H. Holmes but I don't think it lasted for very long yeah. I can't find it anywhere okay so Chicago is why is Chicago the white city I just googled it um, and it is from the World Fair there was a title that came from the World Fair so it, the World Fair played a key role in the creation of the city, city beautiful movement at the core of the fair was an area that quickly became known as a white city for its buildings with a white stucco siding and its streets illuminated by electric lights. Oh. So, yeah. Nice. So, it was like, yeah. So, yeah. That's where, and that must be where, like, the architecture, I, it's been a lot of years since I read this book, so I can't really remember all of it, but that's where it, it must have gotten into detail on that kind of stuff, too, so. But and just for the mere fact of the white, I mean, just because of the World's Fair, they had all yeah. the lights or something? Yeah, yeah. They, well, they, it was, the, yeah, I think, if I remember correctly, too, it's like, they well, they built multiple structures, new buildings yeah. and all that kind of stuff, but I, there may have been, like, a, kind of, like, a tiny, like, um, I'm trying to think of what, it, you know, like, a tiny, like, uh, I'm, like, at a loss of what I'm trying well, to think. Probably but, a lot of people... They probably have seen electricity before, but to see a city right. lit up. Right. To be yeah, to be all lit up. Right, and, the first yeah. time they've seen that. Right. And yeah. and you know, really we'd need to find out what year it became the windy city. I mean, maybe Well, I think that's I think completely different. But yeah, the White City was that that title came from the World that Fair. Was the buildings, yeah. yeah. It came from that eighteen ninety three World Fair. But the Ferris wheel, I know, and that was something too. So the Ferris wheel is named after um, George Washington. What I can't think of. So, do you name. think George that the world? Do you think that um, they moved that Ferris wheel to the Navy Pier? No, I don't think the Navy Pier Ferris wheel is what it what it is anymore. Oh, um, okay. I think that I must. I don't know what it looked like in the beginning, but I'm assuming that it was probably just like little like bucket seat type of things, and then right, maybe you know, this but, is just a replica. Yeah. The original, so here, it was, yeah, it was created by, or constructed, designed and constructed by George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. And it was the landmark for the World Fair in 1893. Um, the wheels of this platform predated Ferris's wheel by centuries. So the generic term Ferris wheel now is now used in American English for all structures, all such structures, as it's becoming most commonly the type, the most common type of amusement ride or at state fairs in the United States. It's a Ferris wheel. But he was building it all because he wanted it to be a ride that people could enjoy that was taller than the Eiffel Tower. If I'm, and that's what I'm remembering from the book. That's what I'm saying as I remember from the book. I'm trying to see if it has anything. It was called the pleasure wheel in the beginning. Pleasure, pleasure wheel. Pleasure hmm. wheel. And and passengers rode in chairs suspended from large wooden rings turned by strong men. Oh, that was hmm. oh that sorry, let's take that one back. That's a little false on false narrative on that. That is describing um something from the seventeenth century in Bulgaria. So take that one back that is not about george washington gale's ferris um ferris wheel it was sometimes referred to the chicago wheel when it opened in 1893 but it looks yeah so he kind of ripped other people off because it looks like there's an earlier wheel that was created in new york state 
at the State Fair in 1854, created by two Erie Canal workers. Well, that kind of makes sense. They just took like a um, a paddle boat and like, hey, let's make this into a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so it was the tallest attraction at the World's Fair, the World's Columbian Expedition. That's what it was called. And it had a height of 264 feet. Um, but it didn't open at the fair until June 21st. So could you imagine going to the World Fair on May 1st and then, oh, it's not open. Sorry, the Dang biggest it. thing is not open. <laughs> um. But it was it was intended to rival the Eiffel Tower, which was a centerpiece of the 1889 Paris Expedition. Oh, and I thought it was trying to be taller, but the Eiffel Tower is 1,063 feet. Yeah. Or, you know, if you want to go with meters, since they're France, 324 meters. There you go. There's some history there yes, for you. Did you go from the Eiffel Tower? Yep. You did. Yeah, I remember now. Yep. I have pictures did from you... I think I was at the top of the Eiffel Tower. Or as far did as you can go up. All right. All right, guys. Listen, I hope you guys had a good time and you enjoyed our show. You're ba- oh my gosh. <laughs> I know it. Like, share, and subscribe. I was trying to do it so that it looked right up when you got on it. <laughs> Shut up. Goodbye, guys. Welcome to our family. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Love everybody. Bye. See you next week.